What I'm about to do is really not the safest and I don't recommend it. So don't do this at home. Please don't sue me. I'm gonna take a kitchen knife. <laughs> Poke a hole in here. Oh, I'm so nervous. Okay, maybe this is not a good idea. <gasps> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear. Everyone who's had a birthday in quarantine. Happy birthday to you. So when you're speaking normally, your body is doing some really cool things. You have two flaps or like stretchy pieces of tissue deep inside your throat called your vocal cords. They live inside your larynx, which is also sometimes called your voice box. Your voice starts when you push air from your lungs up into your larynx, and as that air pushes past your vocal cords, they vibrate. Like if you put your fingers on your throat while you're talking or if you hum, you can actually feel those vibrations, which is so cool. It's kind of like how strings on string instruments vibrate and make sound. Those vibrations move the air molecules either you know, in the room around us or in the case of our voice inside our vocal tract, causing waves that come up through our throat and out our mouth. And then they get even further manipulated when we move our mouths to create specific patterns of sound waves that others around us can interpret as words. These vibrations vary based on how much air we're pushing past our vocal cords, how fast and how hard we push. Our vocal cords can be in different positions and can then produce different frequencies just within our own same voice. And vocal cords and larynxes and vocal tracts vary from person to person in like shape and length and character. This is actually one reason why female-bodied people may have different voices with higher pitches than male-bodied people because female-bodied people often develop tighter and thinner vocal cords, which, if you've ever tuned a guitar, you know raises the pitch produced by the vibration of that string, or in this case, of that vocal cord. And male-bodied people also develop a thicker larynx, or voice box, which can cause the development of that visible Adam's apple and also change the resonance and pitch of the voice. So all of this means that each person's voice has a unique pitch and timbre. Now, pitch is how high a note is, right? So this note is a lower pitch than this note. But timbre is kind of a tricky one. It's basically how we describe the quality of a sound, and it's different from pitch. And it's actually gonna be a lot easier for me to explain this with my cello. What I'm about to play is an A. It may not be perfectly in tune because it's really hot in this room, and my cello has been kind of like fluctuating wildly in tune because of the weather, and I don't have air conditioning. And now, if I play A again, but in a different way, I'm gonna use my finger to press down on this second string over here, and it's gonna produce the same exact note as this open string, but in a different way. So you can tell these are the exact same note. But they have different qualities. So this open string A, sounds a lot brighter. It sort of like attacks, it's very bright, it's very open. Whereas this A, it's a lot more mellow. It's like rounder and softer and has a much more muted character. Now granted, I'm adding vibrato with my finger here, so that's changing it as well, but they just inherently have different timbres. So that's what we're talking about when we talk about the quality of a sound or the timbre of a sound, is that sort of indescribable je ne sais quoi that a sound may have in comparison to another. I feel like speaking is something that we can take really for granted because it's just something that most of us do completely automatically without even thinking. Like the fact that I'm moving my mouth right now and pushing air through my lungs, through my vocal tract, through my vocal cords. You know, when you break it down to all of its component parts like that, I feel like it just becomes a little bit more obvious how kind of miraculous it is. And I think it makes it that much more understandable why speech, the way humans demonstrate it, is so rare, right? Like we are the only animal that we know of that speaks the way that we do. And it's really cool to kind of marvel at all of the pieces that go into making those sounds. 
So where does the helium come in? Well, helium is the second lightest element in our universe, which means it's less dense than air. Air is made up of primarily nitrogen and oxygen in that order, and both of those elements have bigger, heavier atoms than helium atoms. And that's why helium makes balloons float, because the gas inside is less dense than the gas outside. Helium's smaller, lighter atoms also mean that they can travel faster. Like they ping around super fast, while air molecules are a little more sluggish and slow. And this means that sound waves travel faster in helium than they do in regular air. So when the sound wave is pushing those molecules around, helium atoms are moving faster than the larger, heavier atoms that make up air. However, this is where it gets surprising, because even though the sound waves are moving at a different speed, your vocal cords are still vibrating at the same frequency. And that means that the pitch of your voice actually isn't changing. It's technically still the same notes, because what's actually changing is the timbre of your voice, because those sound waves because they're traveling at a different speed, are bouncing around differently inside all of your vocal machinery because they're traveling through a different gas. My beautiful voice, what happened to my voice? So helium isn't actually changing any of your physical equipment in here. It's just changing the way sound travels by changing the medium through which the sound travels and therefore changing the way your voice resonates inside all of your existing physical structures. So there's your answer. I should say that one thing that is changing physically when you inhale helium is that you're not inhaling oxygen. Like I'm getting a little lightheaded. Oh, like our bodies can only use oxygen. And you know, when you're inhaling helium, you're depriving yourself of oxygen. Don't do that because you know, you'll pass out. Tastes kind of metallic. And just to kind of round it all up here as an extra fun fact, or I guess not so fun fact here at the end of the video, the world is running out of helium, which sounds so ridiculous. It's the second most common element in the universe, but here on Earth, it's actually kind of rare. Most of our planet's helium is stored deep underground because it's generated as a byproduct of radioactive decay of elements like uranium. So it's basically kind of like oil, like it's not a renewable resource and it takes a long time to be generated by natural processes and really, you know, intensive to get out of the ground. And unlike oil, once it gets to the surface of the earth or once we like, you know, pop our helium balloon, that helium is just gone. Like it literally escapes our atmosphere and leaves Earth. Like, peace, I'm out of here. And that's primarily because it's so light and it doesn't combine with other elements. Like hydrogen, the lightest element in the universe, likes to combine with oxygen to make H2O and stick around as water. But helium doesn't do that. It's a loner, it's more inert. It doesn't like to combine with other stuff. It likes to do its own thing and nothing can keep it from going out and finding its own way in the universe. And our disappearing supply of helium isn't important because helium balloons make birthday parties more special. It's actually because this gas also has properties like being able to liquefy at extremely low temperatures that make it super useful in lots of scientific research, like figuring out how to create superconducting materials or developing quantum quantum technology. So it's gonna be interesting to see how we handle the helium shortage and if we come up with any cool solutions. Okay, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And uh, tune in next time for some more science -y videos and subscribe and like the video and share it if you want and check me out on social media. Look how sad this balloon is now. Mood. <laughs>